do you really need to go onto an AWS console or an Azure console unless you actually troubleshooting something? This announcement basically means that you will be able to reduce your tax surface. So Terraform, Vault, Boundary, Council are some of the names that you would have heard of their products from HashiCorp. And today, HashiCorp had their global event called HashiCon. And I was one of the virtual viewers, so I thought, you know what, I'm going to share some of the highlights of what was announced. The conference had a lot of people who were primarily developers and engineers, but also platform engineers and security people as well in the mix. At this episode, we'll talk about some of the big announcements, what you need to be aware of, and also focus on some of the security announcements as well. Now, I do want to start by saying a good shout out to HashiCorp, especially Armand, the CTO of HashiCorp. They started the conversation of the keynote for their global event by talking about security. The first product they spoke about was HTTP Vault. They spoke about secrets, the advanced data protection, and HTTP radar that they had announced recently. Now, it's worthwhile calling out, as someone who's been using HashiCorp Vault for some time in different organizations, Terraform has already been a popular language. Vault has been used as a secret manager, a centralized secret manager to be cross-cloud, across different platforms for a long time. So it was very interesting to see could do for them to call out secrets specifically. I guess people use them for more than just secrets as well, but my use cases have always been around secrets. So that was really interesting. And I wanted to take a moment to specifically highlight HCP Vault Radar, especially in his Armand's word. We can say, here's all the secrets we've discovered. Here's the different criticality of these things. And then we can actually use this to drill all the way down to where that secret is being defined. So there's a lot more information about HCP Vault Radar on their actual website. Obviously about the blue bracket acquisition they had earlier, but what I found interesting was that, look at this use case, they successfully integrate into AWS Configuration Manager, Git-based control systems, and directory structures in the HCP ecosystem already. Uh, obviously, the blue bracket acquisition is what is being called the HCP Vault Radar. But the icing on the cake is that at the moment, it says it categorizes secrets, ranks them by risk, which we saw in the demo that Armand had. But it also looks into these things. So it's looking at PII, non-inclusive languages, code analysis. So ISC risk, dependency vulnerabilities. Does that sound like DevSecOps to you? I feel like this is kind of where they're trying to go into the more territory of your enterprise CI CD tools, version control. I love the fact that they've called out the secret part as part of the vault announcement, but they're slowly going to expand into SAST and dependency and ISC as well. So that's super exciting for people who are using this and probably looking for a single place to manage all their IAC risk and SaaS risk and all of that from single platform. Let's get to the next announcement. The next announcement they had was around their product called Boundary, which is identity-based user access. How do you give access to resources without really sharing the SSH key? That's two things that stood out for me in the Boundary announcement. I wanted to focus on that. So I'm going to skip ahead to that straight away. And this has been really great to see is we've brought an embedded terminal or an integrated terminal directly as part of the, the product experience. So rather than um, have to establish a session where you're SSHing or connecting to the database and then have to switch out of boundary and go to a terminal separately, it's all integrated now. So it's a streamlined workflow where you can basically push the button and immediately be in the environment. So for context, while uh, I'm one is drinking water, I just wanted to call it out that if people from cybersecurity are seeing this, they're probably seeing this from a perspective, hey, isn't this what we were doing for privilege access management back in the day? And the other thing you will also see is if you are someone who uses Amazon or Google, this looks very similar to the Cloud Shell that they have on their terminal. So again, Cloud Shell, for people who don't know, are a similar process where you don't really need SSH keys. As long as you're in the environment, you can connect and start using the terminal to interact with the server straight away. This looks like the exact same feature. Uh, my, my question over here is going to be, is the, is the feature competing with what Cloud Native usually is, or is this going to complement it? So because there's already these features available in your cloud provider, would you use these or would you just actually, yeah, it'll be really interesting if they kind of compete with the cloud service providers or are they going to use this as a way to enhance the experience that platform engineers have who may not always want to be on there as well, but they already are working on more. So, but I understand the, this is the stickiness that comes with it, but that was a really important update that I wanted to share with you guys from the keynote for Boundary. Let's move to the next announcement. It's going in the networking challenge around how do we bring an identity-based approach to networking. TLDR for people who don't know what council is, is basically if have you ever been in a situation where you're trying to create multiple servers, but you're not really sure what servers have been created, what the status of the current servers are. Essentially, the idea was that you're able to go, yep, I can discover what host I have on my network, but I also can automate certain things about it. Next, I want to talk about HCP console central. And so the goal has really been how do we provide a single management layer atop of multiple console clusters. So this makes it a lot easier for developers to quickly understand, hey, is my service up and running? 
At the same time, what we've heard from folks is, great, we love this idea of being able to link our self-managed clusters, but we don't necessarily want Console Central to be able to make modifications to configuration or change things. So one of the capabilities we've brought is a read-only link capability. So if you have self-managed clusters, so you want to link to Console Central, but you don't want us to be able to modify anything, now there's a read-only linkage mode that allows you to give us a limited set of permissions. That was interesting for me as well, because you realize, as I explained to you earlier, console is a great place to manage a, a large set of hosts, especially there could be multiple regions in multiple devices, multiple cloud providers. So having a central viewpoint to all of that, especially if they're managed by console, is definitely great. And having that global API definitely makes sense to me in my mind. So I think it'd be pretty awesome when that gets released uh, for people to use. And if you get to use it, you can also use it for security purposes as well. You can find out, are there any machines out in the network that we should be aware of now? All right, let's go to the next announcement. So now I want to switch gears and talk about Terraform. Uh, Terraform almost goes without the need for introduction. And so these are all immensely popular use cases and you can go see things like the Octa provider, which has 10 million downloads on the public record. But I do want to highlight a bunch of really exciting announcements that we have coming. So first is when we think about kind of module testing in Terraform. Now, obviously, no keynote would be complete without some discussion of AI. <laughs> so building on top of the testing work, what we've done is actually leverage some large language models to enable us to auto-generate those module tests on behalf of users. So here we have a module. We can basically push this button and say, please generate some tests for me. And a few seconds later, and a few million CPU cycles later, what we get back is a whole bunch of auto-generated tests. Right? And so the goal here is, you know, again, it's AI driven, so you know, maybe 70% right. But how do we save you a bunch of time and at least get it 70% of the way there? And then you can fine tune these tests based on, you know, great. Actually, there's some additional edge cases and other usage patterns I want to cover as well. And I think this speaks a little bit to our general philosophy of how we want to approach AI, right? I think there's definitely a pattern to put a burn on it right now. Um, but we want to be really thoughtful in bringing these capabilities in a way that's really focused on how are we adding to the user's workflow, how are we unlocking productivity rather than just put a chat box, right? So as uh, Arwan called out, no keynote, at least in 2023, is going to be complete without talking about AI. This is the first mention of AI. A hint, there might be another one heard on the whole AI generated thing from a perspective. They want to not just, uh, I guess, rocket ship their way through it. They want to be more measured about how they approach AI, which is good. So they started with something which is quite in demand, like the module test, which sounds like a really great use for generative AI, uh, which is also a great place for me to shout out for the AI cybersecurity podcast. If you listen to one of those, uh, that you'll definitely hear about how cybersecurity and AI is work, kind of working together. So if that's of interest, definitely check that YouTube channel out as well. These are great announcements for Terraform. They're able to do some module testing, which has not been the case in the past. They also are looking at things like, how do I put some test framework, which came out last week, which is great. But this is just like halfway point for Terraform. We're still talking about Terraform. So I'm curious what else he talks about this. Multiple workspaces as you get more advanced configuration. So of course, we can do this and we have users that have many thousands of workspaces in very complex that all the users can use. So we constantly have been looking at that. How can we make this better? How can we automate this more? How can we bring more awareness to Terraform? Well, the fact that there's dependencies between all of these different workspaces. So what I'm super excited to preview for the first time today is what we're calling Terraform Stacks. Now what Terraform Stacks does is bring a native understanding to Terraform of multiple component layers, multiple environments, and provide a single orchestration experience across all that. This is the biggest enhancement to the Terraform orchestration engine since Terraform was released. It's the reality is a lot of the cloud environments these days is being built by Terraform. There is a workspace, there has been a workspace challenge for a lot of time for people who have been working in the platform engineering space, especially also if you're trying to do security across that as well. That's definitely something people talk about. But one thing I want to shout out over here is that now using this layer in Terraform where you're managing your AWS providers, your Azure providers, your Google providers, your Kubernetes providers, as you kind of keep managing that and maintaining that from Terraform, do you really need to go onto an AWS console or an Azure console? unless you're actually troubleshooting something. Does the Terraform stacks, does that take away the need for you to even log in into a cloud provider, which means things like your the abstraction layers that have existed outside, you don't need to have them anymore. You can just use the HTTP platform to make the right call for each of your cloud providers and any on-premise services that you may have as well. So you can that could become like a central management layer for your platform team. 
that would be super interesting. By the way, he's not done yet. He's still going out, going by Terraform. So I'm curious to see what other announcements are there. Right. Or Armand brought up the dev environment. He left the company. Six months later, the dev environment still running, right? And so you see these patterns over and over again. And a huge amount of this just turns into just wasted spend. You might say, great, CI environment, it auto destroys after 24 hours. Dev environment auto destroys after a week. And now you can actually manage that in a much more dynamic way. This announcement basically means that you would be able to reduce your tax surface because you would have less orphan workspaces hanging around in your Terraform environment. And you would also have maybe good climate footprint as well because you reduce the amount of wastage you do with the resources. Overall, the concept of ephemeral workspace is definitely great because even though it was announced very recently, we are in a world of cloud where resources themselves are very ephemeral and why shouldn't the workspace be? So this is a great addition. So good job on the HashiCorp team for coming this up. Uh, let's keep going. And so there's this fundamental tension around how do you deliver a platform experience that doesn't turn into a black box? How do we enable developers without disempowering them to understand what's actually happening? And now really thinking about it as an internal developer platform with that explicit goal of enabling a set of golden patterns to be defined by our platform team to get exposed to our developers, along with a set of golden workflows, but not delivering it in a way that's a black box. Right? The developers want to be able to click through and understand what's happening when they need to debug something or go deeper, but they shouldn't have to know how it works at a very deep level just to deploy an app, do a build, do a rollback, execute the sort of day-to-day -day set of golden workflows. So what does it actually look like? Well, if I'm a platform engineer, what I want to do is define those set of patterns. I might write infrastructure as code and put it in my version control system. I'm going to capture that as a set of modules in Terraform, so these are reusable. Either if someone wants to point and click using it as a no-code module, or they want to consume it as infrastructure as code in an automated way, great. These become repeatable patterns. And then I can express that as a golden pattern that gets exposed through Waypoint for developers who don't want to know how the infrastructure works, who maybe don't know what Terraform is, right? And so now as an app developer, I can come to Waypoint and say, great, I want to just consume these golden patterns. I can come in and just say, great, I want to create a new application. What is the set of patterns I have to choose from? I can come in and basically just select one of these, hit go, and have that actually orchestrated for me. So we have a whole bunch of stuff that we've announced around Terraform stacks. I'm hugely excited about. Stay tuned. You're going to hear more right after this. Testing as part of the latest release, enhancements, to editor validation, ephemeral workspaces, and tight integration with HTTP waypoints. So I loved all the announcements so far, but these ones have definitely been my favorite. So the whole HCP waypoint, uh, the way template approach to have a golden pattern for no code approach to HashiCorp, I love that. So let me picture this as a cloud security engineer or a cloud engineer or cloud architect, probably doesn't have any clue about how Terraform works. I don't need to have an understanding of Terraform. I can use the Terraform no code to create a pattern of say paved roads for what the right pattern should be to have a AWS account being created have a Azure account being created, have a GCP account being created, whatever the pattern may be, without knowing anything about the deeper details of the Terraform, I create that as a no-code module. And once I'm comfortable with that, I we can obviously publish that as an ISE, but at the same time, I'm able to use that as a waveform. So any developer or any platform engineer who wants to use a, uh, a security-approved way of using infrastructure, they this is amazing. So the whole golden AMI pattern that you would have seen in most cloud providers, now that's coming to HashiCorp as well, which is pretty cool. This also shows you the maturity that HashiCorp is going through products as well as they work with more enterprise. The standardization, abstraction is becoming a thing. I love what Armand spoke about, the fact that when you have 4,000 developers and only 1,000 know how to use a HashiCorp, do the remaining 3,000, do, do they really need to know Terraform? What's the next level of abstraction? And the team came up with the wave point which is a great idea so let's continue with the rest of the announcement so i wanted to shout out this as well they had a live demo from uh, the two folks from hashicorp apparently they were only given a very short notice so good on them for doing a great live demo they did a good job uh, there's another ai announcement from uh, armon towards the end and so again no keynote will be complete without the second reference to ai so this is where we work on the developer ai that's integrated directly to dev dot so you can ask the questions like yeah how do i actually configure a terraform no code module Thought in the demo it looks cool. And so what you'll get is a, an answer back that basically synthesizes a bunch of our different tutorials and documentation, gives you a concise answer, and then links to some of the underlying documentation if you want to drill in further. I like the idea of how they're using the chatbot feature for summarizing their complex documentation into one particular question. If you are after, say, if you're a security person, you just want to know how do I develop a module? 
uh, maybe how do I develop a no-code model? So that would be pretty great. So I would love to hear from you if you enjoyed the keynote. Uh, was there something that I missed? If you have any questions about HashiCorp specifically or how HashiCorp can be used by security people, definitely drop that as a comment. Otherwise, I will see you next video. Peace.